Will the Saints make a surprise selection in the first round? We are here off the bench. T Bob, Abear, Jacob Hester, Nick Underhill joining the show here in the middle. And then, of course, me, Superstar. We're going to talk Saints draft, a little Saints draft preview, if you will. So, with the acquisition of Chase Young, I said that the Saints now have a little wiggle room in the first round. They have a little wiggle room of what they can do at 14. They do not have to land a edge rusher with that 14th pick now. They don't have to possibly be forced into trading up to ensure they get one. They can trade down. They can move around a little bit. They can take an offensive lineman or a tight end, Brock Bowers. They can do all kinds of things. They can say, you know what? We don't like any of the offensive linemen. We don't like any of the edge. Let's drop down to like 21, get some draft picks, and then take like lot two at 21, right? So a lot that they can do. Now, I'm not sure what the surprise selection would be. The only thing that would be truly surprising is if they went like quarterback. That would, that would probably be the only shocking thing because the Saints do need to just build the roster. They do need to just get younger. They do need just talent. So if the most talented player on the board is a wide receiver at the time, it wouldn't surprise me if the Saints took a wide receiver. It wouldn't surprise me if the Saints took Brock Bowers. It wouldn't surprise me if the Saints took a defensive end or an offensive lineman. Uh, I don't think there's any linebackers that are like any middle linebackers there. I don't think any DBs are projected for that slot. So that would be kind of surprising if they ended up landing on one of them. But for the most part, I think anything is on the table. Draft plan change with any of the signings the Saints have made so far? Yes, I just explained it. I think they can go on the 14 with kind of a clean slate now. Like it's not like this pressing go. thing that you have to do. Now, you know, my, my thing here is like I, I would still love to see them double dip. And I know in a hurry it makes that room kind of crowded in the short term, but a year from now, like you might not have Chase Young. You might not have Cam Jordan, depending on what he decides to do with his Yeah, I agree. I think it's crazy that people are like, Okay, you got Chase Young now. You can't take a defensive end. You can't take a pass rush. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right? That's not true. We still have, like Nick said, we still have a Cam Jordan situation. We still have a Chase Young situation. He's on a one-year deal. That's not guaranteed at all. So if you're sitting there and you're like, man, Dallas Turner has fallen or Latu is there, if that's the situation you're in and you like that player, yeah, take him. Who cares? Like, it's never wrong to be strong. It's never wrong to be good in a position, especially a position as volatile as defensive end or an edge rusher. You know, I I, I think... In, it's still, it is still way more impactful to take a edge rusher or Brock Bowers or a wide receiver if they fall than taking an offensive lineman. We absolutely need offensive line help, but it's so much easier to get that help in free agency or later in the draft. I would love, my, my personal pick was, is Brock Bowers, but if it wasn't Bowers, if I had to choose between an offensive lineman or a, or a edge rusher. If I would love if we ended up with Latu. I mean, he just looks so ready. He looks so good. It just jumps off of the screen when you watch his highlights and you watch his pro day and you watch the combine. If we had him and Chase Young and, and you know all these other players rotating in and out, we would just be so set at such an important position. Is uh, with with his career. I mean, like the the cupboards become empty very very quickly. Peyton Turner might not be here. Hmm. Who knows what Foskey's going to look like a, yeah. a year from now? You know, maybe maybe he hits, maybe he doesn't. So I think getting somebody in that pipeline, if they're there, like versus there, uh, uh, Turner's there, like. I would draft one of those guys still if they're there, but I don't think yeah. you have to anymore. I, I don't think you have to do anything at 14 anymore. Like, if the right receiver's yeah. there, um, if Brock Bowers is there, if you want to trade down and draft, I yeah. don't know, Keon Coleman, like, you could do... If he would have said Latu there, if he would have said trade down and take Latu after I just said, after we just are basically saying the same thing, I, I might have just self... I might have just imploded. I might have just exploded right here on, on, on not live TV. Do that too. Like whatever you want to do. I think, I think the, the door is open for kind of any direction you want to go. So, um, I, yeah, I think it, I think it drastically alters it. It takes that like pressing, pressing need off a, yeah. like if they had to field a team right now before chase young comes in, like, I, like it would have been massive trouble. And I don't know if this like changes my win prediction for him, but it makes me feel better about whatever direction they're going. So, yeah, I think, I think the, what I said was the best possible the best possible thing you, we could do is trade down now because we're probably going to miss the Dallas Turner area. So I keep saying a lot to, but he's a guy who I'm seeing Jared verse to. They're both being mocked right now in like 20 to 25. If you believe 
that he'll be there. Like if you believe either one of those guys will be there and you trade down from 14 to 19 or 14 to 20 or something like that, and you can get some picks for the later days that we do not have picks in. We do, we don't have those. You know, we have a ton of picks in the fifth round, but nothing in the third round, right? If you want to trade down, get a couple third round picks, or get a third and a fourth, or however you want to do it, I, you know, I don't know that. And then take your guy, and then take a lot too, or take a Jared Verse. I mean, you talk about perfect, absolutely perfect outcome for us. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for. The little trade counter to go up. Ooh, New Orleans Saints have traded down to pick 21. And then we wait and see. Boom. We we end up taking, you know, Jared Verse or Latu or whoever at, at 21. Like, that would be just so perfect. Yeah, I, I definitely think it opens up their options at 14. Uh, last one for me here is O-line the most – Not I'm not saying draft need, uh, but just no. in terms of a position group that maybe – has to be addressed or fixed or that you got questions about is offensive line the top of that list? I'd have I don't think there's a top. I don't think there's like I would have I would have your ability to rush the passer. And you know, terminology's different. Whether you say it's edge, whether you say it's defensive end, whether you just say pass rusher, I don't know. But I would say the ability to rush the passer is number one. And then I would say the offensive line is probably number two. But they're all kind of the same. The Saints are in one of those fluid situations where you're just trying to get talented players across the board. So it's definitely not the number one like draft need because I believe it's very. I think it's. I think offensive line is the easiest position to fill in free agency. It is the only position. And this is going to be controversial yet, Brayton. This is one of those things that only I'm saying. It's probably going to blow, just blow everyone's mind. It's the only position you can go get like a 34, 35-year-old in free agency to come in, be a day one starter, and be really, really good. There's no other position you can do that. You know, you can go get a guy who's a 12-year, 13-year NFL vet who's a solid C-plus player, go get him off free agency, plug him into left guard, and all of a sudden, boom, you filled it. You can't go get a 35-year-old wide receiver, a 35-year-old tight end, a 35-year-old running back, a 35-year-old cornerback, safety. The list goes on and on. Outside linebacker, you know, middle line. You, that, the only position that you can really still extract tons of value from, besides kicker and punter, is offensive line. And you and a lot of you are going to say, well, what about quarterback? Qu-? You can't find the, va- the quality quarterback in free agency. But you can find a quality lineman in free agency. So that's why I think, yeah, it's definitely a positional group that we need to upgrade. But why do it in the draft? Go do it somewhere else. For me, yeah, that no question. I I think it's it's something they still have to do. Um, Andrews Pete was visiting the Titans, so I mean, I, yeah. I think there's a possibility that that he takes off now. He's been out on the free agent tour before and brought his offer back, and in, in the Saints met it. I think that might have been in 20. I feel like COVID was going on when that happened. Um, so that's happened before, and he's come back. So it's definitely possible he he could do that. But yeah, I think they absolutely they they got to figure something out there. You know, I. I do think that inside that building, there's more hope on on Trevor Penning than there is probably between the three of us talking. Right Four of us, I mean, let's, yeah, up right here, yeah. right now. Like I, I have no, you know, no no ability to to look at that and say like, yeah, he he could give him something. Cause I I just haven't seen it. But I know they feel like he he's someone that that very much could be a starter next year. You know, and they feel like he's going to earn that. So. We'll see, um, but I would definitely try to find someone to to bring in and, and plug that gap. I, I feel like it's it's a must, but I don't know if there's the same sense of urgency uh, with the team. And with this draft being so deep at tackle, like they wouldn't have to necessarily do what they feel like you know always happens in the draft, which is move up and try to reach for a player like this tackle depth in this draft. Now the guard and center position is is obviously not as deep, but like you would be looking at tackle, don't you think, if you drafted. Yeah, I mean, great point, too, where, just like I said with, with Latu, you take that away where you go from 14, let's say you trade from 14 to 21, let's say you trade from 21 to 27, and you take a tackle. I'm cool with that, too. You know, you're all of a sudden, it's like we're addressing a position of need. We're getting a guy we like. If, I mean, this is all, you know, this all is, is if the players are there. But you just trade down a couple times, get a bunch of thirds, a bunch of fourths, a bunch of what seconds, however, however it ends up being, get a bunch of draft capital, and then you end up addressing that need anyways. Like that, that is such a the the ability now for us to do that and not have to pick at 14. Because before the Chase Young thing, we had to pick at 14. 
we had to pick at 14 and we had to make it work because we didn't have the flexibility to, you know, say, you know what, we're good here. We'll go down. We have that flexibility now with Chase Young, just because he's a young player. He's a guy who can, I mean, he's almost like a draft pick at, at, at that slot. He's almost like, we're going to try this out. We're going to see if it works. We're going to see if something's there. He's 24 years old. You know, that's how I look at it. He's, he's almost like a draft pick. So, if that allows us to drop down, which is what, I mean, we need pass rushers, offensive line, and more draft picks. And we could possibly knock out all three of those with the Chase Young signing, trading down, and drafting a player. So, I mean, the first the, what we do in the first round now just got very interesting, and we got a lot of options. An offensive lineman? It's super deep, yeah. So I think they, they could do it without making it like a, a you know, a, a pressing got to do this type of move and, and you yeah. might still be able to address it for sure. Um, you know, if, if they were, if they're somehow able to bring Pete back, I feel a little bit better about yeah. that position. And I'm about to be a hypocrite here because like, I have no reason to believe in Nick Saldaveri because we haven't seen anything, but for, I don't know, like, I, I feel like he's going to be good just based off of what we saw in camp last. All I know about Nick Saldaveri is that he's, I think a 68 overall in my Madden franchise, and he's absolutely diced. Like he's he's not big. He's not a big guy on the offensive line. He's he's kind of shredded out of his mind in Madden. So that's all I know about him. That's it. Last year, I, I think there's hope for him, and I think the system suits him. I do think that the system suits Penning a little bit better than than some of the stuff they were doing last year. Even though there's a lot of similarities in, in crossover, but you know, I I do think that there's a possibility that he could be a little bit better. But you know. That, that you know that's interesting because we we've, we've talked a lot about Trevor Penning here and I don't think he's very good and he certainly hasn't been very good but if if inside the building they think they can get something out of him and they think that the system fits him better that changes everything too because then if you're thinking like hey we we already have our guy we already have our left tackle or wherever they foresee him playing then it's like man you really open the door to what you can do at 14 because we're sitting here and we're saying they got to get an offensive lineman. They got to get a defensive end. And they they might be thinking we have Chase Young and and Trevor Penning. We're good to go those positions. They could be looking at wide receiver. I, who knows? Like they could be looking. We're going to trade down twice. Take Keon Coleman at twenty five. Bada bing, bada boom. Real sky in the room. You know. So this is where you know me or Nick or whoever can only forecast so much inside of that building. What they think they can get out of these players. What they think. What they or see happening with like Andres Pete. It, it's really interesting. And and that's why I keep always say like Mel Kuyper and you know, these guys don't know what they're talking about at Mel Kuyper thought Justin Fields could be traded for the eighth overall pick. The entirety of the NFL didn't think Justin Fields was worth a fifth round pick, you know? So it just shows you the difference between what someone outside of the building, how they can view a player or a pick or a contract or whatever, and how people on the inside can view things. So, Keep that in mind when you're trying to do these mock drafts and when you're trying to, you know, put players in certain picks. If you're asking me, like I, I my ideal pick at 14 is an O lineman, and and I know it's boring and it stinks that you got to do it because you keep drafting guys on on the line, both lines, over and over and over in the first round, and here you are back again sitting on it. But the they could draft a, a tackle because, like, look, Ramchek comes back and he plays fine, but like, how 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 much runway is there? Like, the knee isn't going to get better. It's degenerative. It's it's not going to improve. The issues that hit him last year are only going to get worse going forward. You might be able to pause it, but that pause button is only going to hold for so long. So, even if like Penning comes and he's great, and you draft an alignment at fourteen, and there's maybe not an immediate need for for another tackle, there will be very very soon. So, I don't think it's a bad pick, even if it doesn't address what you need right this moment. So I, I feel like that's still like for me, I'd be trying to get no lime in there. I just don't think that they're going to view it that way. Nick Underhill, New Orleans stuff. Football is the site. Uh... If it was me, if I had to, you know, if I, it, it's one of those things where I think this is so obvious and that's why it worries me because I'm sitting here and I could be wrong, but I, I never am. But I, I'm sitting here thinking like this, is the most obvious thing in the world, just trade down. It was obvious thing in the world. I, I, to me, it's either Bowers. You take a Bowers and you say, we're going to try and go all in on just the, who we think is the best player. Or you trade down a couple times. You get your offensive lineman, since the offensive line position is the tackle, especially is deep in this draft. You just drop down as many times as you think you can, get as much capital as you can, address your offensive lineman, 
and then you start addressing everything else throughout throughout the next couple of picks. But to sit to stay there at fourteen, to stay at fourteen and just take a, a lineman who is basically interchangeable with the other six linemen who are going to go in the first round or you know first round early second, like. I would hate to see that. I would hate to see them just sit there, stay put, and then take. Like I've been seeing us getting mocked the uh, the guy out of Penn State, but then I've also seen us getting mocked the guy out of Oklahoma. I think it's Guyton, but I've also seen Guyton mocked to like twenty nine, like twenty eight. You know, it's it's the same five or six offensive linemen, and they're all mocked to go somewhere between fourteen and thirty two, somewhere in there. You know, they have, this guy could go like the. Penn State guy. He could go 14. He could go 24. Yeah, Guyton could go 27, or he could go 14. You know, it's like it just shows you that when it comes to offensive line, you really don't know. You know no, no one really knows. So I would just hate to see us sit there and take whoever the guy would be. I would much rather us drop down a little bit. The team is locked in for free agency, the offseason hole, the NFL draft. You want to go subscribe. If you are a Saints fan, you owe it to yourself. At Nick underscore Underhill on Twitter. Nick, thank you so much, my friend. I say to every video, if you want the most detailed information about the New Orleans Saints on a day-to-day basis, information you can only find, or that information you can only find at NewOrleansFootball.com. So, yeah, if if that's what you're all about, NewOrleans.Football, get involved for sure. We... You know, we're re- we react to videos with their content all the time. So if you're looking for that, if you want you know, to put your cash somewhere to get some quick, juicy, golden tidbits, that's where you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about pick 14? Sorry if you hear sirens. <sighs> this city, man. This city. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.